Get ready for your daily dose of marketing strategies and tactics from entrepreneurs with the guile and experience to help you find success in any marketing capacity. You're listening to Marketing School with your instructors, Neil Patel and Eric Sue. Welcome to another episode of Marketing School. I'm Eric Su. And I'm Neil Patel. And today we're going to talk about should you be repurposing your content? So you've invested a lot of time into blog posts, videos, whatever it is exactly. The question is, should you be repurposing your content? And absolutely you should be because you're trying to maximize your investment. You think of your content as an investment towards the long term, right? You're trying to build up SEO value. You're trying to build up your brand. You're trying to build something where you can drive paid traffic to. Um, it is an investment, so why not try to maximize your investment in the first place? So the one thing I will say is, let's say you're doing a blog post. I'll, I'll give you a simpler example. For this podcast, for example, we actually do post it to multiple channels at once. So this is a form of repurposing. Of course, it does go to our Apple iTunes feed, so you see it pop up um, if you're on iTunes, but we also auto-post it to Google Play as well. Uh, we auto-post it to SoundCloud, and also YouTube has been very helpful for us too, um, and also to our social channels. It all does it at the same time, um, and then it has been helpful for us in terms of getting eyes in other areas. So first things first, repurposing will help you get eyes in other areas where people might otherwise have not found out about you. So that's the first thing. Yeah, and as Eric mentioned, we repurpose this podcast. Not all form of content has to be text-based. And if you are using text-based content, you should repurpose that as as well. There's a big misconception out there that Google penalizes for duplicate content. They've explicitly said that they don't penalize for duplicate content, like words on a page. So if you write a blog post on your website, why wouldn't you put it on LinkedIn and get more traffic from it, right? Like the actual post and publish the content again on LinkedIn. Why wouldn't you put it on Medium and get extra traffic as well? Sure, it won't all be coming to your website, but that's fine. And then from these sources, make sure you link back to your original source, not because it's going to help boost your rankings or anything like that, but it also helps people know that, hey, if they want more original content like this, they can be going back to your site. And we do this a lot. I don't really repurpose too much content on the Neil Patel blog, but I do repurpose a ton of my guest posts. So if I write a guest post in, uh, on, on entrepreneur.com. I also guest post in Brazil on their versions of like Brazil Post. That's like their version of Huffington Post. And we'll have someone here in Brazil translate the content into Portuguese and we'll republish it. It works really well. Why? Because then that way we don't have to keep creating more and more content. We repurpose our guest posts in Portuguese, Spanish, and German, for example. So just from the repurposing, we're doing around 30 pieces of content around the web each and every single week just from guest posting. It's worth it. You should try it. You get more traffic. Why not? You have very little to lose. Yeah, so for Neil, let's say you know, your typical blog post on Neil Patel, how many words are those usually? Now they're 2,000 words, but I'm shifting back to 5,000 plus words and I'll only be blogging once a week. Okay, perfect example right there. So if you're writing a 5,000 word post, you put it out there, that's your masterpiece. Well, in in many cases, uh, you can splinter out the post. This is a word taken from Digital Marketer. You can splinter it off and look at some of the subheadings that you have. Those can be converted into blog posts as well, or those can be converted into small podcast episodes too. So um, you're probably thinking, Right now, there's a lot of different ways to repurpose. How are you gonna manage all of this? There certainly has to be some kind of workflow or template that you can go out there and follow. So all you need to do is go out there to Google right now, type in content repurposing workflow. Um, That's from Aleda Solis, I'm butchering her name right now, but content repurposing workflow. Look for that template and it's gonna show you all the different ways that you can go about repurposing your content. Get with your content team or get with your writers and start to think about how you can go about setting all of that up because that is going to maximize, again, your investment because you don't want to just spend you know, a couple hundred dollars, a couple thousand dollars on a piece of content. Just put it out there and then that's it, right? There's a lot more that goes into it. Um, and obviously, you know, if you're buying a house or whatever, uh, you want to maximize that investment. Why wouldn't you want to maximize your investment with content? The only thing you need to be really careful with when you repurpose is think about the monetization aspect of your business. So if you make money collecting emails, that's great. If you make money from ads, that's great as well. But if you repurpose too much of your content, you put it elsewhere and you make money from ads, you won't be generating that many. If you repurpose the content elsewhere and you make your revenue through emails, well, you can link those articles or add links within those articles to landing pages on your website where you collect more emails. But you have to be really careful about your monetization methods 
because some monetization methods such as advertising, repurposing can hurt you due to the fact that you will eventually lose a portion of your traffic because if someone sees your article on Medium, it may not be a big portion, but if someone sees your article on Medium, they don't have a reason to come back to your website. So you'll lose that page view and that ad impression. Yeah, and I've seen a couple of people, I mean, on Medium or Quora, you know, they're literally rewriting the same answers. They're answering people's questions. They'll say, hey, if you want to read the full answer, come to my blog here. You could certainly do that with some kind of call to action. You know, on Medium, I see people, they'll add an image that looks like an email um, sign up, opt in form, and then it actually clicks back to the website. So you can do something like that. Or on Quora, on the very bottom, you can say, hey, if you want to read the full post, just go here and, and say, hey, you know, I write about, uh, for example, I write about marketing all the time, read my blog here. You can certainly do that. And I will say for this podcast too, another example of repurposing is we use Rev, that's R-E-V dot com, and we transcribe each and every episode out there and we go to, we put it on marketingschool.io. With that being said, I think that's it for this episode of Marketing School. You know, our, our take on repurposing is definitely do it. You know, like Neil mentioned, if you're doing any, if your business is ads based, you know, page views based, then, you know, maybe you want to reconsider it. But for us, at least, you know, um, it's, it's been pretty helpful for us in, in the long run. This session of Marketing School has come to a close. Be sure to subscribe for more daily marketing strategies and tactics to help you find the success you've always dreamed of. And don't forget to rate and review so we can continue to bring you the best daily content possible. We'll see you in class tomorrow right here on Marketing School.